and welcome to this week's Food Sports Central, the podcast of the World Food Championships. And let me tell you, we're now in July. The year is flying by. We are full swing having food events take place all over the place. People are qualifying for the World Food Championships. Categories are closing for the World Food Championships. Man, this is still the, and that really, most of those things all happen by the end of June. So here we are, very beginning of July, we have categories already closed. We have champions in, in all these different events around the country already named, and we are on a rapid pace to Dallas, Texas for the 10th anniversary event of the World Food Championships. So in this time, this lead up time that we have, one of the biggest things we wanted to do was not only talk to competitors, not only talk to Mike McLeod, although we love to talk to Mike McLeod, he always gives us some of the best tidbits of what's going on. Competitors give us great insight. But I wanted you to have a minute and have an opportunity to meet the people that make this happen. These are our sponsors. These are our partners. These are our team members. The, the, the engine, so to speak, that drives the bus that is the World Food Championship. Because without any of these people, this doesn't happen. You don't get to watch 300 teams compete. You don't get to watch 10 champions be crowned, and you definitely do not get to watch Final Table where those 10 champions go through a culinary gauntlet to determine who the champion is. So in that vein, we are going to start right now, right here, with our guests this week, and we have two of them. And it is from a fantastic category you all know and love very much that this company is going to be a part of. And not only that, it is an exciting new opportunity to try something we really haven't seen at World Food Championships. So today, I want to welcome in Jim Matheson, the Executive Director of the National Bison Association, and Jesse Deerdorf, the Business Manager slash the Boss of Benjamin Lee Bison. And uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about themselves, about bison, about the category they're a part of. And honestly, if you're not excited yet, you really should be. Start taking notes because if you're in this category, you're going to get some tips today. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing well, thanks. How are you, Mark? Doing very, very well. So, you know, this is also the first time we've had three people on the show. So normally it's just myself and someone else, but I yeah. love this because you're going to get different perspectives. So let's start off with Jesse. You guys are the Benjamin Lee Bison Company. And of course, that means bison. And what's so great about this is what category are you guys going to be a part of this year? We're a part of the sandwich category, which we're really excited about because we are really set with a goal to diversify um, mm -hmm. everyone's opinion of what you can do with bison meat. Um, you know, it's not... Um, you know, something uh, by far the most common thing you see is a bison burger, which is great. And we love a good bison burger, but you can do so many different things. And so we thought with going with the sandwich category, we can introduce everyone to multiple different types of cuts and styles that you can go with. So our whole goal is um, broadening the um, opportunity with bison. And I think that that's such an exciting opportunity because these teams the 30 teams that are going to be in the sandwich category are some of the most creative people on the planet. They know that they've got to bring their A game. They know that they have to, to follow those guidelines of the eat methodology. And one of those big ones is execution. And this is really going to be a new protein for a lot of those teams. And, and Jim, how does the National Bison Association really kind of, uh, you know, funnel into all of this? Yeah, so Mark, we're very excited to be a sponsor along with Benjamin Lee Bison here for the sandwich category this year. <clears throat> this is kind of new territory for us as well. But as Jesse said, you know, we want a lot of folks out there have had a buffalo burger at least, and we're we're encouraging people to look beyond the buffalo burger. And that doesn't mean, you know, don't eat ground bison meat or anything like that. Uh, just do different things with it. I mean, my gosh, a meatball sub and there's so many things come to mind as, as we talk about the sandwich category in bison. Uh, you can really substitute bison for any cut of beef, literally. Uh, so it's really not going to hamper these chefs. And I am super beyond excited to see what these amazingly creative people come up with 
as a result, but we encourage people to explore the whole animal, you know, tip to tail. Uh, you can essentially uh, have a use for, just as the Native Americans did, <laughs> have a use for every part of the bison there, and we encourage uh, the, the whole use of the animal. So, and both of you really kind of tell your side of this one, how did you come to be involved in the World Food Championships? How did bison become now front and center of, of a significant category full of crazy, wild, excited cooks and chefs. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll start off there at least, Jesse. Um, so about a year and a half ago, I guess it was, or probably two years ago, we started hearing about the World Food Championship. And of course our instinct is to see if they include bison. Um, and having not seen any bison in the past uh, World Food Championships there, we decided at the National Bison Association to get a booth uh, in the uh, picnic area, barbecue picnic area, I believe it was called mm -hmm. at the outside lot there. And, you know, we're very much uh, in favor of local agriculture and supporting local agriculture. So as such, I started looking around Dallas, uh, Texas for, for local producers. And we've got a long relationship with Benjamin Lee Bison here. So I reached out to De Jesse and her team and see, wanted to see if they'd want to collaborate on, on a booth there uh, to introduce World, Champion, World Food Championship folks to, to Bison. Uh, and we did. Had a booth last year, which was a total hit. Uh, we had a wonderful time ourselves personally. And then on top of it, uh, and I'll let Jesse speak to this more, but uh, Benjamin Lee Bison graciously brought in a professional chef who uh, made this awesome bison brisket that we just handed out for three days and just got nonstop compliments over and over about it. So um, that's kind of how we jumped into it. And like I said, I had a wonderful time and uh, wanted to have a more significant presence moving forward accordingly. It was so great. And to piggyback off of what Jim said, we personally had so much fun. Um, it was just neat to see such great collaborations between chefs and all the different presenters and sponsors there too. And so it was hard not to look at how we could expand our presence there for this next year. And um, being able to partner with the National Bison Association and really have a huge umbrella and a grasp on being able to, to build on that. But one of the neatest things and, and what really pushed our desire to go back, um, come back this year in a, in a larger presence was the amount of people that stopped by the booth. And like Jim mentioned, um, you know, we provided a lot of samples and I think we provided at least 80% of those individuals that stopped by with a piece of meat they've never had in their life, which was so neat to be able to present that, um, educate and uh, kind of tell them how they can get their hands on it, what to do with it, um, what's the health benefits and what's the reasoning for looking at transitioning over to bison. And we just felt like there's, I mean, we barely tapped that market there in Dallas. Let's do it again, but let's do it bigger. Um, and I personally am a huge food fanatic. I'm a believer that the only purpose or need for a TV is for watching food shows. Um, and so this, in addition to it being a great time, also uh, filled a lot of my bucket for um, being able to present, you know, a hardworking product that, that we invest our, our time into, but also being able to be there around so many great chefs and excited to see this year what they can do. Like you said, they're very creative and I think this is going to be super exciting. So the million dollar question that everybody's going to have competitors, guests, onlookers, tasters, judges, everybody. When you think about bison and you think about different proteins and everybody has all these different methodologies about proteins, whether it's beef or chicken or duck or deer or whatever it is, how do you describe to these first timers, these people that have never even tried bison before, how do you describe bison to them from, you know, an eating standpoint, a culinary creative and cooking standpoint? What is, how do you elaborate on bison? Um, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we, we first asked them if they've had bison before or buffalo. Um, most, as Jesse said, most of the times they have not. And then that's our opportunity to explain the product to them, explain that this is a uniquely American product and that all the bison in today's commercial marketplace is coming from North America, 
just about all of it is processed here in the United States. Uh, really nothing is, is imported um, as bison meat. So you're eating a uniquely American product that literally evolved on this continent. You know, the, the bison has been here for, for tens of thousands of years, of course, and hundreds of thousands of years. And, you know, as such, it has become a really keystone species of particularly the, the American plains. Um, so, you know, we explained to them the importance of them supporting the bison business because at the end of the day, it is restoring the species itself. You know, as you know, I likely know, we were down to less than a thousand head of bison in the world just 150 years ago or so. And through largely efforts by farmers and ranchers in partnership with uh, conservationists and tribal groups, we have brought that number up close to 500,000 today in North America, and it's a huge conservation success story. Uh, so just the act of eating bison is an act of conservation, uh, which we try and make that clear to them. <clears throat> and every bite helps, um, you know, and that just speaks to the story itself. Uh, the nutrition is off the charts, it's hard to beat this protein uh, for its nutrient profile, very low in fat and cholesterol. And as I mentioned there, you know, pretty much every cut of beef has a comparable cut of bison that you can work with. Uh, and it's delicious on top of it. Yeah, with what Jim said, um, I couldn't agree more with the phrase uniquely American. Uh, when, when you're eating bison, you're tasting the plains and the pastures that they were raised on and what they grazed on. Um, and you see that come out in the nutritional benefits, you know, considerably lower fat, um, less cholesterol, great protein levels. And, and it's also exponential in regards to the B12 and the iron. It's um, a protein that you, you can't really compete with, um, especially when it comes to the comparison of that and the conservation of, you know, both land management and the animals in general. So um, the way we raise them definitely changes how you can use the meat, taste the meat, um, and also know that you're working and providing a, a conservation effort at the same time. Yeah, that's, and there's so few things that you can say that about. You know, most of your, you're not gonna hear that when they when you talk about just about any other protein, especially, especially an accessible protein. This is something that people can get their hands on. We're not talking about something mm -hmm. that is, has gotta come from overseas or it's super rare or, it's, you know, an A5 Wagyu that is out of most people's price point for sure. This is a product that people can work with, that can get huge benefits with, but also to unlock that creativity instead of just always using the same proteins. And you see so many people when they mm -hmm. go into the grocery store or competitions and, and, you know, in other thing, avenues, they're just going off of the same proteins, chicken, pork, beef. You know, some people will stray into duck. Some people will go, you know, venison and things like that. But this is, like you said, a truly American product with history and heritage. And you have an entire angle of conservation in there with it. And it's nice to see that there are those comparable cuts. So there is going to be some familiarity. I could get this cut here in, say, beef. And this would be the comparable bison cook. Do Are they similar cooks to those cuts? Or is maybe there some things that some tips and tricks you might want to know when you start to work with the bison uh, on a similar cut you're normally familiar with? Yeah, um, very similar. Um, you know, it is a question we get asked a lot. Um, you know, people always seem surprised. Oh, you can get a ribeye from a bison? Yep, they still got those muscles. Um, same with the rib bones and, you know, the briskets. Um, you know, anatomically, they're very similar. Um, I think the only addition you really can come away with is, is the hump roast. Um, but uh, when it comes to cooking, you really have to play into the leanness factor. Um, you don't have all that intramuscular fat that needs to be rendered down. Um, we say our recommendation, and I know each chef has their different terminology or their different style or their viewpoint on things, but we say turn up the heat and lower the time. Um, so a little hotter and a little quicker um, to help that out because you don't have to render that fat out. Um, I've recently got into sous vide and that has been a miracle worker because I am the queen of overcooking a steak because steak night means a bottle of wine night. So I open the wine, I enjoy a glass, realize I had a steak on the grill and I've overcooked it. So that's the biggest 
biggest takeaway um, or thing that we hear people say is a lot of times they'll say they don't ex appreciate their first bison steak experience that they make um, because 99% overcooked it. So you want to cook those things not over a medium. Um, the, the leaner, the less cook, and the better it will end up texture-wise. What would you say is the ideal temperature? Because everybody talks about steak is your kind of your ideal temperature is a mid-rare. I think there'll be some argument for that, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I, won't, I won't listen to them. But <laughs> is, your, is your typical. Is there an ideal temp for bison? Ahead, I think around 125 to 130. Um, I'll pull around 120. Um, that's personal preference. Um, we usually say if you like your steak well done, like you mentioned, bison not might not be the right cut um, for your first try because you're going to want to play with some different. You can still have a one well done steak. You're just going to want to play with a couple of different methods. You can braise a steak. Mm -hmm. Um, you can slow cook a steak. You can sous vide cook a steak. Um, but when it comes to like a quick sear or a quick grill, um, you know, we recommend that 120 to 125. But we have people, I tell them that, they say, oh, I don't go over 115. So, you know, I don't know what the, the health department has to say on that, uh, on how rare I can tell you, but uh, we currently have some bison tartare on a menu. So that's going to be not cooked at all. Uh, so mm -hmm. personal preference, but that I would say pull at 120, enjoy around a 125 to 130. <laughs> And I'm real bad about using a thermometer. <laughs> I tend to go by color uh, almost exclusively. So yeah, as Jesse said there, uh, a medium steak for me is wonderful. Um, I do some sous vide work myself and uh, a sous vide ribeye for an hour at 130 degrees in the sous vide, sear it on the grill real quick, and it's an incredible eating experience. And then I would just add on to what Jesse said there. Um, it's interesting, I, I just did a live a cooking demonstration this morning on local TV, cooking up some bison burgers. And I was thinking about, we usually come into this saying, well, you cook it slow and low uh, is the approach to bison. But as Jesse said correctly, you know, that's not always the case. With the burgers, I like high and short, uh, as she said there. Mm -hmm. uh, same with steaks, you know, because um, <clears throat> it, it does quick cook through very quickly because as Jesse alluded to, there, the fat is not there to insulate it from the heat. So it is gonna cook through quickly. So ultimately, yeah, you do have to pay more attention while you're cooking it. And I mm -hmm. have done the same thing as Jesse with a glass of wine <laughs> and uh, kind of forgotten <laughs> about it. And the last thing we want for folks to do is go down to the farmer's market and spend $40 on a steak and then ruin it when they get home. So our website, bisoncentral.com, uh, we've actually got a pretty good cooking section on there with a few videos, tons of information, tons of free recipes, all that good stuff for folks to go educate themselves on before they uh, jump into that, that cooking experience with bison. And I think that's key, having those resources available for these cooks and chefs to say, okay, I wanna do my due diligence, I wanna research, because one thing you will hear when you get neck deep in with these competitors is, I can't tell you how many blank I ate trying to get this recipe right. Uh, you know, it's always funny to listen to the people in the bacon category because they're like, I've eaten 700 pounds of bacon uh, <laughs> trying to, to get my recipe right. And it's hysterical to think about the quantity that they do because they just make it again and again and again. Right. Because once you, want, once you get to kitchen arena and you start that cook, Everything needs to be just muscle memory, just go. So I think it's going to be great that there is the website and you'll see that on the screen that people can go to, to get those tips, follow along, learn, even find resources where they can pick up the product. And, and I think that's where great, where Benjamin Lee comes in and where they can get product so they can start working with and, and social media, following the teams on social media. What is, what's some of the best ways to get, the Benjamin Lee Bison? So we have a full online store and we ship uh, nationwide. Uh, we're at BenjaminLeeBison.com, just our name. Um, and we have, gosh, over 45 different options. Now, not all will be available um, in the pantry at the World Food Championship, but there will be a selection of multiple different varieties. And um, there's plenty of options on there to pick from and choose. Uh, which would be great for just trying it out. I mean, like you mentioned earlier, if you haven't tried bison meat before, 
yeah, I mean, the first time in, in the arena is not going to be ideal. <laughs> You're going to want to play with it first. Uh, so we have a great option. The National Bison Association also is a huge supporter. Of, um, they support all of our ranges and there's, you know, couple hundred of us and they provide lots of outlets for locally sourced bison for um, anyone any of the chefs around the region as well and i think that's great i mean it's i'm excited already to think about i know my wheels are turning i'm thinking about okay if i was to be in this category now what would i be looking at and the sandwich is so broad Mm -hmm. you have such an incredible opportunity when it comes to a sandwich a burger there's some pretty stiff rules to it being a burger. A yeah. sandwich literally is unlimited. Like you can go crazy with a sandwich. And I think that that's going to lend itself really well to bison and maybe seeing bison prepared in multiple ways on one sandwich. Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't just have one cut prepared one way, but maybe stack it up almost like you would see an Italian and where it's got three different mm-hmm. types of meats, maybe take three different types of bison and three different preparations and three different cooks and give yourself that same kind of uh, robust flavor profile. So mm-hmm. I think it's going to be really interesting to see. And I, and, and I can already tell now you're going to get an influx of people asking <laughs> questions, watching videos. They're probably Googling on their phone while they watch this right now. OK, I need to know more about bison. And between the National Bison Association and, you know, Benjamin Lee Bison, I I think that they're going to get a great education prior to. And when they get there to see you guys in person, I I think it's going to be even more cement that and bring that home that we really are talking about an incredible local product. And it's local to, to so many different places. But it's like you said, it's really that very unique U.S. protein. Exactly. So what is something when you, cause you got to see world food championships last year, you got to kind of get your feet wet there, uh, see some of the competitors. Like you said, see lots of new people, um, sampling bison for the first time. What are some of your favorite things that you saw while you were there? Uh, everybody has a different take on, on something they saw while they were at world foods that just still sticks with them to this day. Yeah, I'll go first, Mark. Um, you know, I was I was kind of blown away by the diversity, uh, honestly, of the the crowd that would come by the booth and being newcomers. Um, and I don't think I watch as much uh, foodie TV as as Jesse does, but a um, couple times I was just talking to a, a person that walked up to the booth and turned out they were a big time uh, food champion, sure, food champion. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, you know, and everyone was so personable and, and so friendly. And like I said, age, super diverse. Um, and the community was super diverse. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was really neat to be to be a part of that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought you couldn't really tell the the competitors from the public, which I, I thought was kind of cool. I think um, I loved a lot, I would say the diversity, uh, which was great. It was also fun to be able to sneak away and from the booth and watch some of the competitors uh, in the age ranges. I mean, there were young kids out there, there were families out there, there were professional chefs, um, there were culinary students and also just the variety of food they were making. I think, you know, someone was making um, dessert out of tomatoes and, you know, just this crazy variety and the creativity and everyone's take on the challenge was just really fun to watch. And that's just what has me super excited about seeing what it's going to happen um, with this year's category. But I just think the wide variety and, and also just how much um, excitement uh, was in the air for trying new things and supporting others and their recipes. And I just think overall it was just a great experience. Good. That's what, that's what I always love to hear. You know, when people first have their first experience with World Food Championships, that's it. The the awe and the diversity and the excitement level and every walk of life you can possibly imagine is going to be competing. Our our champion, the one who, who took mm-hmm. the top spot, beat the 10, he was 18 years old mm-hmm. at the event. And then you had our soup champion. That was her ninth World Foods. 
So <laughs> you literally get both ends of the spectrum here, and it shows in the quality of food, the creative kind of nature of the food that comes out of there. And then when you look at the way the judging takes place using eat methodology, I mean, you really can't, you really can't miss on any level at that point. Execution, appearance, and taste. Those are the three big ones. If you, they have to submit a recipe. So that's another thing that's really exciting when you're judge, and I'm sure you guys will be able to do some judging while you're there, is you get to look at the recipe before you taste because everything has to match. So when you're in Kitchen Arena and, man, something's just not working and so you need to pivot, you can literally hurt yourself by pivoting because if it says that you saute and you end up frying and pan frying instead, like it, it's going to make a difference and it's going to hit you in points. So I really think that that adds to the uniqueness of this competition and the uniqueness of a product like base, uh, bison. So I'm going to ask each one of you to give me one super tip straight from the source that you think any competitor wanting to work, they wanted to be in the sandwich category, that's going to work with a bison. What's a super tip for them? And Jesse, let's start with you. Oh, goodness. Super tip. Um, I'm going to say practice on a lean meat. Practice on bison. And I'm going to do two parts. Um, show us something that you've never seen anyone do with bison. I like it. I like it. What about you, Jim? Yeah, I was actually going to mention the leanness part into practice and not overcooking it, but um, also don't over season it. You know, bison has a really amazing mm -hmm. natural flavor to it, <clears throat> as Jesse was speaking to earlier, and you don't want to cover that up with salt and pepper, you know. Mm -hmm. um, be very, yeah, be be very measured in how you use your spices and which spices you use because there's there's a wonderful natural flavor to bison that you don't want to you don't want to cover up. And see, I think that's good because in my mind, I kept going around about how does bison take to a marinade. And if you keep thinking steak, 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 you're going to think heavy salt, heavy pepper to help bring out those flavors. And so I wondered about that with that unique flavor of bison. Can you risk drowning that beautiful flavor out by going too far with your seasoning? That's right. <clears throat> yes, you can. So, I love it. So again, give us any websites, social media pages that everybody can follow and learn more about bison. Sure, ours again is bisoncentral.com. That's our website. Uh, there's a consumer section on there that will show you how to cook the product, where to find it, all uh, how it was perfected by nature, et cetera. Um, definitely worth a read. And then our social media handle is at National Bison. And we're at BenjaminLeeBison.com. We've got cooking tips, recipes, um, and also our online store is on there as well. Um, social media, we're at Benjamin Lee Bison. We also have a foodie page, which is at by underscore some underscore bison. And you can check out both of those. That is also kind of sneak peek for specials and deals we do. And also kicking, cooking tips, recipes, um, cut explanations and cut introductions and ideas as well. Well, there it is, sandwich category. Everything you need to know about bison in two sources. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to connect you with the, the people and the products and the information you need to put out your best dishes at this year's, this year's World Food Championships. And you can find out more information and more deadlines, the, the secrets behind the secrets and how things are going to lay out and things you need to know before getting to Dallas at worldfoodchampionships.com. And also follow us at World Food Championships on Facebook and Instagram. I want to thank Jim and Jesse both for coming on today. Uh, we're really excited to see you guys there again with a big prominent role in the sandwich category. Thank you so much for being on today, guys. Thank you. Excited to be there.